people like their their victims to be silent even even people who aren't abusers for some reason there's a lot of enablers everywhere hi there thank you so much for joining me i'm hecate and this is finding okay a healing podcast for survivors of sexual assault and any and all abuse. When survivors share, we share strength. You are not alone. In today's episode, I'll be speaking with Alice Cotton Socks. You might know her as Alice Does Wonderland on TikTok or Alice Cotton Socks on Instagram. Her brand of dark humor feels like a safe haven. If your safe haven is a cemetery, mine is. Every time I see she's posted a new video, I know she's about to improve my day, and I know I'm not alone in that because Alice has over 443,000 followers on TikTok as I record this, and she'll have more by the time this episode airs. Her videos have a specific existential dark humor mixed with whimsy, honesty, and poetry. It's occasionally flirty, always delightfully quirky, and if you're weird, slightly spooky, or neurodivergent, it will help you feel seen and inspired. Alice is a survivor of childhood abuse, and she is very open about her struggle with mental health in her videos. I was thrilled when she agreed to join me as a guest, and today we'll be talking about how facing past traumas has affected her, where she's at in her healing journey, and how she's caring for herself not only as a human being, but as someone who has a strong presence on social media, who is subjected to a lot of vitriol for showing up as her authentic self. Alice lives in a small, picturesque village in England, and so we did have some connectivity issues during our interview. The audio has a couple rough spots that are very brief, and if you're a Patreon member watching the video, it will be more noticeable. But we made it work, and that's what matters. Fast internet is the sacrifice we sometimes make to be in beautiful places. The more duck crossing signs a place has, the less likely they are to have fiber optic internet. Make a note of it. But I'm over the moon that I got to talk to Alice because I'm such a fan of her videos and I'm really excited for you to hear from her as well. Before we dive in, if you enjoy the podcast, please consider supporting my work by becoming a Patreon member. Tears start as low as $1 a month, and membership at any level changes my life. Tier 3 and 4 patrons gain access to a new supplemental patron podcast called Finding More. Click the link in episode notes to learn more about membership benefits. And now it's time for... Trigger and content warnings for this episode include the following. Trauma, childhood sexual abuse, agoraphobia and cyberbullying. Please check in with yourself and make sure you're all right to continue. So uh, before we get started, I just wanted to acknowledge how weird it must have been to like actually be able to see someone just like stalking your social media <laughs> feeds like before having to speak to them. <laughs> felt really weird. I, <laughs> I did see that, but I found it very exciting. <laughs> I was like, oh. And I, I like every time I posted or looked at something like I, I was like, maybe I should make this less weird by not pinging her with notifications. Of, but I was like, you might as well weird. get the likes out of it. Whatever, you know, <laughs> I like I like weird. Always embrace the weird. I like <laughs> that. And, and I appreciate that about you. Thank you. <laughs> so I like to start with some icebreaker questions. And yes. I'd like to start by asking, are you OK? I am okay. Well, I'm surviving. <laughs> I have like maybe two good days out of seven, which I think is pretty good for now. <laughs> um, I'm grateful for the two days. <laughs> yeah, I try and, like, and get a lot done in those days. Appreciating them when they happen is always a, a good thing. Yeah. Instead of just shaming yourself for the fact that there's only two. I oh to... yeah, I do I do a lot of that too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get better about not doing that. It is a an ongoing process. I'd love to hear a compliment that you've received and that you've never forgotten. 
Um, you know, this is a hard question for me because my brain is not very good at paying attention to the positive stuff. <laughs> That's why I ask it because I'm a jerk. <laughs> ah, yes. You know, I think I remember once when I was a little kid, one of my teachers said I was like a spider because I was very good at climbing. And, you know, in hindsight, I think she was trying to insult me, but I really liked that she called me a spider. I like spiders. <laughs> I love how unusual that one is. And it's always <laughs> interesting when someone says something that in retrospect, you're like, I don't know how you meant that, but like it sticks yeah. in, a, in a good way. I like those ones. I think I was a difficult student and she probably resented me a little bit and that's why she was she was saying it in you know not such a nice way but I took it in a nice way because spiders are cool they are cool I've had a lot of arachnophobia very strongly for almost oh, really? almost all of my life yeah I uh my my father let me watch a scary movie when I was about five years old he let me see the movie arachnophobia Oh, okay. Um, and I was just terrified, yeah. but I, I recently did like a whole, like face your fears thing with a friends. Cause she was afraid of dolls. I was afraid of spiders. And so we watched horror movies together about them and like faced our fears together. And it actually really helped. And now I have jumping spider friends in my studio ah. that like I name and they all hang out and I'm like, so I'm doing much better about it. And, but spiders are awesome. Yeah. And I used to like yeah. read books when I was a kid to try to make myself less scared by understanding them more. And they're awesome. They're amazing. They're fascinating. They are. They are. They're so wonderfully weird. I had a, I had a pet jumping spider last year, but it died. I'm sorry. Ago. I miss him. He was very cute. <laughs> Did he have a name? Yeah, they don't live very long, I guess. He had lots of different names. I just sort of called him random names when they would come to my head. None of them stuck. But I liked it that way. <laughs> yeah. I like how they make little hammocks. The the jumping spider hammocks. It's very cute. Yes. Yes, and they look at you when you when you talk to them, they look at you because they can hear you. It's very yeah. cute. I like, they're they're like puppies with yeah. lots of eyes. <laughs> they're a good one to use to get over your fear. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know what your favorite color is and what you associate with it. Or your favorite color combination. My favorite color. Well, I think it's purple, but that's only because I buy a lot of purple clothes because I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> What makes a favorite color? All colors are good, aren't they? <laughs> I've come across some people that hate certain colors. Really? I think it's, yeah, I, and yeah. I think it, a lot of it is like personal taste or, or maybe having bad associations with them or I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, I guess that makes, I mean, now I think about it, I don't really like yellow very much, so that makes sense. <laughs> I like the word purple more than the color, I think. It's just it's just a good sounding word. It is a good Pur word. Purple. 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 It sounds funny. Purple. Purple. It makes me think of the song Purple People Eater. It's a good one. Oh yes, that is a good song. I grew up with that one on the Dr. Demento CD that I used to play on repeat as a child, listening to all the weird songs. I don't um, know what that is. <laughs> you know, when like you you like something as a kid, you're like, well, everybody knows about this or everybody likes this. And and later you yeah. find out that it was kind of unusual. Um, there was like a compilation of just the weirdest songs ever written. And oh. so like- well, that sounds like something I would like. <laughs> yeah, like poisoning pigeons in the park and fish heads and they're coming to take me away, ha ha. And oh, I know that one. Yeah, like, so there are things that, like, you may have heard or, like, Purple People Eater, but it was all on one CD. And uh, and I think they made, like, a couple compilations. I'm going to turn this. 
light purple for you. Um, ah, but cool. if I had to summon you in a ritual, uh, what five things was I would I need to place as offerings at each point of the pentacle on the floor? You know, I, I've thought about this a few times before you even asked because, you know, I like summoning things. So it's a fun thing to think about. <laughs> um, and I always say definitely one of them is cereal because I only really eat cereal and I just feel like that's like a big part of who I am now, cereal. <laughs> Do you have a favorite um, cereal? I like cookie crisp. Do you have that over there? Cookie crisp. Isn't there like a dog that's like, oh, cookie crisp? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you need five things, don't you? I think I would have to say um, Cherry Pepsi Max for the same reason as the cereal. I'm a very healthy individual. <laughs> Maybe my cat. I'm very similar to my cat. We were like kindred spirits. Some sort of doll. I like dolls a lot, especially if it's a broken doll or a very creepy looking doll. Love those. And the fifth one. Like just any dead thing, really. Nice. Yeah. Like bones or decay or taxidermy or I love have... taxidermy gotcha I have a little taxidermy mouse see with the balloon I love yeah them. I want to get more taxidermy things haven't yet though I'm actually wearing my muskrat jawbone earrings <sighs> That's cool. I've never actually seen a muskrat apart from in um, Red Dead Redemption. I, I grew up visiting my grandparents in Wisconsin and they were all over the place. We'd always see them like swimming through the water. So I've never seen uh. one out of the water, but they I think they just kind of look like giant rats that just sort I of like swim, swim around. And yeah. I'm jealous. We just get pigeons here. <laughs> there could be some some good taxidermy pigeon situation that you have yet to discover I, I would I would actually love that I would love a taxidermy pigeon mm. I would love to hear three essentials to your self-care uh, it's very easy I'm very simple really I have this udi which I live in pretty much and also also this giant water bottle and, and noise cancelling headphones nice these are new though i haven't had these very long but they've like changed my life really i can relate to that i, I got the loop earplugs yeah i've um, seen those they have made my life so much better yeah, it's crazy how how much I realized how I was like overstimulated all the time. <laughs> when I got yep. the headphones, I was like, oh, ah, what a relief. Well, and just, just being able to like actually do something about it for the first time instead of just freak out. That's been a really nice thing, especially for, I don't know if they've noticed it yet, but probably also for the people that know me too, because I used to yes. just, yeah, like, yes. you know, or getting feedback, just sort of like, wow, you're in a really terrible mood. Like you're acting kind <laughs> of like a bitch and it's just kind of like, well, I'm losing my fucking mind. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So I, I first saw you and your content on TikTok. And I wanted yeah. to ask, when did you start making videos and why did you start making videos? Well, it was around the time that I developed the agoraphobia because I was bored and I wanted to be able to work from home. Um, I was already working from home, but that was, I was working in tech. So I, it was coming to an end with the working from home thing after COVID. And I was like, I don't mm. want 
to go to an office anymore. And so I started making the videos and that was over a year ago now. Wow. I, 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 I wasn't expecting to have any sort of audience. That was a surprise to me. It's still a surprise to me. <laughs> but you, here we are. <laughs> you do have quite the audience. Yeah. And, uh, and like as, as a member of the audience, something that I deeply appreciate about you is the specific sense of humor that you bring to your videos. There's a dark humor, there's the existential undertones, and it's, uh, <laughs> it, it can be, it can be flirty, it can be a little sexy, it can be like weird, quirky, like it's, it's all the things. And whenever I get a notification that you have a new video up, it always just makes my day. And, oh, thank you. Uh, but I wanted to talk about that specific dark humor and what role that yeah. plays for you in your life and in your healing or just kind of about that. Well, you know, it's interesting because I, I, um, the only other people I sort of joked around with prior to making TikToks also had the same sense of humor. So I didn't actually think it was anything different until I started making TikToks. Um, it's always just come naturally to me. It's, it's like since doing this, I've realized that a lot of it is like a coping mechanism. <laughs> But it's like so ingrained within me now that I don't, I just, that's just, that's just what I do, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't do a lot of socializing like in the real world. So I don't know how well those kind of jokes go down with like normal people. <laughs> It's until I have a video, until I have a video go to the wrong audience and then I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Doing that in real life and getting to see the things that happen like across a person's face when you say uh, something is, it's a magical treat. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I can imagine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've sort of noticed, I didn't for the longest time until I started talking with people about it that also had a similar sense of humor and we sort of started to notice like ah oh, we've all had certain experiences in our past yeah. like so I think exactly. there I sort of like recognized you when I came across your content I was like yeah I get a lot of people that instantly get it and I'm like oh okay and then <laughs> yeah and then you get the opposite of people who just assume the worst because they don't get it at all yeah but it's easy to brush that off to a certain extent because I'm just like you don't get it yeah that's okay I'm happy for you <laughs> well and I wanted to talk about the way that you respond to people who just don't get it or the people that come in to your comments and are just like straight up saying horrible things to you or being really yeah. misogynistic or just shitty to you or like bullying you about the way that you act or the way that you speak or you know things like this and you always have the most amazing response and so I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the responses that you get to your content and to just the way that like who you are as a person because you show up as yourself like a lot of people yeah. assume that it's an act and it's like and that that's that must be wild but you always meet it in the most amazing way oh thank you yeah I I mean I I can certainly ex understand it to a certain extent especially because a, a lot of the hate I get is from teenagers um and they say they see a woman acting the way I do having the voice that I do and I'm older than them and they're very confused by that I think but they don't have the perspective on the world that I would expect of, uh, even a, even someone my age, to be honest. Like, unless you've gone through stuff, you don't really know. So I don't hold it against the teenagers. I get a little bit more annoyed when it's adults. But again, I think a lot of people are either privileged 
or they're not ready to face their own problems in that way yet. And so they just sort of like, ah, I get it away. <laughs> so I guess I can I can brush off a lot of the hatred because I just see them as ignorant and it doesn't really matter what people who are ignorant have to say about the stuff I'm talking about, you know? <clears throat> and then at that point, it's just about using them and their ignorance for inspiration and being like, how can I take this and turn it into something else that will benefit me? <laughs> Basically, selfishly, do you know? Well, they're the ones that put it out there, so. Exactly. Might as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I actually recently had a guy who he said some horrible thing to me and I, I made a video and replied to it. And then he was messaging me afterwards, um, offering to pay me $15 to take it down because he was getting hate in his comments. And I thought um, that was really funny. <laughs> are you comfortable talking about which video that was? Oh, I can't remember which one that was. <laughs> I don't know. There's been a few that people have had tantrums about. <laughs> <laughs> so they all sort of blur together in the end. Yeah. The most recent one I had controversy with, but that was again, because it, it got pushed out to teenagers. Mm. And I know when it's getting pushed out to teenagers because they all tag the, each other in the comments and they, they talk a certain way. It's very oh. obvious. <laughs> Um, I didn't realize that a lot of it was coming from teenagers. I think a lot of the ones that I keep seeing are are from older men that should. Oh yeah, well they're they're a completely <laughs> different breed. They are. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it's very fascinating to, you know, I'll I'll put thought into a, a video and it's sending a message. I understand a lot of what I'm saying is quite subtle, so people don't pick up on it all the time, but. Either way, I'm putting effort into this stuff, right? And and these men, they just come in and say the most disrespectful stuff, thinking that I don't I don't know what they're thinking, to be honest. I, I they've all got different motivations, but I think really a lot of it is their attention seeking from me or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's disgusting, is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But again, you always you always meet it in the most amazing way. The response that's public at least like is always incredible. Do any of them ever get to you and like away from the things that we see? Is there anything that you do on your own time to kind of take care of yourself? I did have to have a break after the most recent one went viral because I have a limit and every, you know, once once there's thousands of people saying the most horrible stuff to you. I think you just have to kind of like turn the internet off and yeah. ignore it for a day or two. <laughs> Otherwise um, I'd go crazy. <laughs> I'm glad you took a break when you needed one. Um, yeah. There's this thing that I, that I keep seeing kind of happen with some of your content and it's when you will talk about something Specifically, uh, there was one where where you joked about being molested. Yes. And people did not like that. And no. so just it's not the first thing because the I love the video that you have pinned right now on your TikTok. Oh yeah. And it's it's the one where someone came in and accused you of like uh posting pedo bait and you were yeah. you're perfect response and it kind of had this uh this thing that like also uh very strongly relates to that whole situation which is um the way that someone exists and the way that someone talks about certain things a lot of the time it just makes people so uncomfortable but it's kind of like well this is the way I am and this is what happened to me and I get to talk about it however I want yeah. And I'm and sorry I get if to that joke about it. Comfortable. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like and and there's that thing where everyone like f loses their fucking minds when someone who's actually been through it like makes a joke and it's just kind of like no, we're we're the ones that get to make the jokes. Like y'all are ignoring people, like everyone mm -hmm. else making jokes about it, but then as soon as like we do, like 
people like their victims to be silent, even even people who aren't abusers for some reason. There's a lot of enablers everywhere and those kinds of comments come from those kinds of people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I-, I replied to some of them um, saying, well, no, Hank, I, I was molested. That's why I'm joking about it. And they will just double down on their stance and they'll be like, oh, okay, uh, I get that and I'm sorry that happened to you, but you shouldn't be doing this. And it's like, mm, you just don't, you don't get it. And yeah. they'll say things like, I don't, I don't joke. I don't do these insensitive jokes. I'm like, well, that's okay for you. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's yours, it's yours to talk about. It's yours to joke about. It's, if you want to make light of it, I think that's, incredibly important I've joked about my bullshit like (laughs) I think I I think it's important and uh honestly I don't know many survivors personally that I've talked to that hasn't made a dark joke about it I think it's a very important part of reframing things for yourself and and just uh yeah because like what what are you gonna do if you can't poke fun of it or make light of it like then it just gets to be heavy and scary and depressing your whole life cool it's like it's like taking control back of of it and you know also a lot of it was just my life and if other people could make jokes about their life even the bad stuff then so can I just because mine makes you shocked and you don't want to hear it because it makes you think of bad things it's like well yeah but that's what happened to me you know (laughs) unfortunately you know this is the reality that we live in (laughs) yeah well and if that makes somebody uncomfortable maybe instead of making that your problem like they can you know go deal with the culture that we live in that perpetuates these sorts of traumas like exactly I had one comment which made me laugh because it was someone saying that you shouldn't joke about molestation and he had a South Park profile picture, and I found that hilarious because, like, they South Park does that all the time. All the time. Yeah. So they, <laughs> people just want to have a stance against stuff. I think a lot of it is performative, really. Like, once a, a video is getting hate, all these people come in and they want to fit in, and they join in on the hate train, you know? And yeah. then it just gets out of control from there. And a lot of them just don't, just don't get the point of my videos. They think that I'm being serious or I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretending to have an uwu voice or something. They just think that that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Which is obviously I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you, in the video that's pinned, you addressed that perfectly and just kind of said, I've been, you know, shaped by certain things that I've experienced and you're just making assumptions, uh, like the worst assumption about me when, uh, yeah, well, I'll be linking some of your videos in in episode notes so that people can go watch for themselves. It's Um, like you could make all sorts of assumptions about a person why do you jump to the conclusion that I'm pedo baiting what (laughs) you know it just doesn't make much sense to me I don't want them anywhere near me I don't think most people do no one wants that yeah (laughs) I mean you have people that do pedo bait but they do it to I don't know catch them and punish them or something so I don't know, it's, as an insult, it doesn't really work in any way. <laughs> well, and if, if I mean, like the, I, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Cause you're, you're, you're clearly like a grown ass person. Like you've yeah. got, you've got tattoos, like you have to be an adult in order to do that. Like if nothing else, like that's kind of a marker, but you know, like that's me being really really very logical about the whole thing but like you're you're clearly a grown-ass person you're not yeah I don't I don't know like I can I can understand the childlike mannerisms thing but it's just sort of like I don't 
I don't get the argument. I don't, and I, I don't dress like a mm -hmm. kid. I don't, you know, I have a pretty adult body. Like I don't have, I just don't, I don't know. I don't identify with trying to be a child at all. Yeah. You know? No. <laughs> no. Well, and I don't know. I, ultimately, I keep kind of thinking, well, that there's a, a level of participation. So if someone is perceiving you to be childlike and then sexualizing you, it's kind of like, well, I think you're sort of telling on yourself in some way. Yes. I always and... ask, I've, I've been asking this question since this, I started getting these comments. I'm like, okay, but what childlike mannerisms? And I've never got an answer. I've never got one. <laughs> it's like, I talk like an adult. I have a high voice, but the way I talk is like an adult. You know, I use words that kids do not use. I talk about things that kids do not talk about. And I, I understand that some people think that I have certain mannerisms, but I don't really know what exact mannerisms they deem to be childlike. And they can never tell me, so... I just think it's all bullshit, really, just because I'm a bit weird. <laughs> well, and even if they were to tell you, like, here's a list of of what you're doing that's childlike, like, what's what's the next step? Like, is is the demand that you stop acting in those ways because it's inappropriate? Like, you know so to pretend to be a different person in order to make other people more comfortable or like I don't yeah I just don't get it yeah I mean I don't think they think it through themselves when they say it they just have an immediate reaction and then decide to comment with that immediate reaction and don't yeah. give it much more thought than that mm. and that's why when I do call them out they either don't reply they double down with just illogical arguments or or they have a tantrum <laughs> yeah you do have a lot of people having tantrums in your comments section that's um, yes yeah well it's quite funny really <laughs> I quite kind enjoy of, that it kind of is because the argument is like that you're childlike and it's just sort of like you are <laughs> having a complete meltdown in my comments section um it like like a child in a grocery aisle <laughs> like I don't now who's childlike <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's me <laughs> and my favorite is when the comments branch off and then all of a sudden there's like seven people having an argument in a sub thread about Jesus and I don't know why they're talking about Jesus or or you know Hitler or something <laughs> Awesome. Just, it, just, it just goes from naught to a hundred like over the, <laughs> just the silliest thing it's really horrifying <laughs> oh geez yeah the internet is a magical place yes. yeah it's terrifying it's terrifying I never actually wanted to be a person on the internet I don't know how I got here honestly <laughs> yeah I never planned to be on the internet either and now I live here and um, I am still processing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so just a very, doing? it's a different experience for me because I'm on Twitch and there's a certain mm -hmm. level of control and you have moderators that can clean things up like as they're happening. Um, yeah, yeah, just very different experience. But yeah, I never expected to to end up like living on the internet, but, but here I am. Yeah. yeah. Same here now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you talked in one video about when you have experienced certain long-term trauma from childhood into adulthood that you don't really get to grow up properly and you talked about yeah. something that I really appreciated was the process of raising yourself or being a parent to yourself and mm -hmm. I was wondering if you'd be comfortable just talking about what that raising yourself process is and what that kind of means to you and what that's looked like for you because I know that's highly relatable and that there's a lot of people who are maybe haven't put it in those terms but are starting to to kind of work on that same process for themselves yes becoming your own parent 
Yeah, there was a period and it wasn't that long ago where I was reflecting on my childhood and like over a, over a while realizing more and more that, oh, even the good parts, like everything, <laughs> my parents were shit basically, you know, <laughs> and I was let down in so many ways that to me was normal because I was a child and you just think that your parents are the boss yeah. they're right they're always right you know but certainly mine always had that attitude and um it was the process of learning that hang on a minute I was a child and they were an adult and I don't think it's right to treat a child that way hang on a minute <laughs> I would be a better parent to myself, you know? Yeah. And then <laughs> and then going, oh no, all these problems that I have, a lot of them are age regressing in a way. You know, I age regress when I'm having a bad time and then recognizing that it's because those parts of me were not nurtured as a child and I have to nurture them now because I have no one else to do that, you know? I'm the adult now <laughs> and yeah. that's just like part of taking responsibility for yourself is nurturing the parts of yourself that are you know struggling <laughs> can you talk more about what that means to you or how you've been trying to like nurture parts of yourself uh a lot of self-care making myself do things <laughs> even if I think those things uh, are selfish or a waste of time, I have to, I have to stop and think, hang on a minute, would I say that to someone else? Would I say that to, you know, mm. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. And then just treat myself like a person, basically, you know, mm -hmm. Being like, you know what, it's mm. okay to have a bad day and not go outside today. Yeah. But it is really hard to do that. <laughs> Well, and you've talked a lot about the struggle with agoraphobia in some of your videos, and you've filmed some really beautiful, like, just like, come outside with me today. Really, really beautiful and inspiring. So I just kind of wanted to talk about when did the agoraphobia start to show up for you? And uh, how are you kind of working with it? What's what's this process like? So I, I left abuse a few years ago. And then I had, like, what I think is sort of like a like a honeymoon period after that where I was like I'm I'm fine you know <laughs> and I didn't know that was a year or so and then all of a sudden everything hit me because I I had to move out from where I was staying and I went to live in my childhood home and that was sort of the catalyst for uh, I guess was a bit of a breakdown and the agoraphobia started around then. I mean, I had smaller episodes of it before, but it became a consistent problem at that point. Mm -hmm. I then made the decision to move away from there. I was like, I cannot stay in this house anymore. It's making me really sick. So I moved to this lovely little village thinking that, you know, then I can go outside and it's nicer, it's safer, it's quieter the people here are all very old and non-threatening so um, and that was a really good idea I've been sort of battling it ever since moving here but <clears throat> I do get out more because it's nice here so it has helped <laughs> it does look beautiful there yeah it's smelly <laughs> but that's fine <laughs> I, I did see there's some sewage problems. <laughs> yeah, so uh, like, uh, we have lots of protests going on at the moment because our water company is pumping sewage into the, the water and, mm. you know, that causes a lot of problems. So there's yeah. protests. <laughs> mm. But it's, it looks nice. You just, if you just don't breathe through your nose. <laughs> I have also lived in a very beautiful and smelly place. Yeah, with you, similar you, issues 
Yeah, I mean, I'd take over a city any day because it's, it's yeah. just, it's very calm. You did mention that you were in your childhood home minute. Yeah. How long ago did you leave and you realized like this is a problem or what you were experiencing there that made you realize that like I need to extract myself from this situation. I need to leave. So I moved, I moved away from there about a year ago mm-hmm. and I was there for only a few months I didn't predict it happening at all, actually, because at this point I hadn't, because I have so much trauma, at that point I hadn't really dealt with a lot of the childhood stuff, which is primarily what the home was triggering. So that was just suddenly like dumped on me with no warning and I had no idea it was going to (laughs) happen. I think it was a very prolonged period of fight or flight and I just had the urge to just run away but then this crippling depression after realizing I had nowhere else to go (laughs) you know I ended up actually spending a few I spent two weeks in an Airbnb before that I was going to hotels on the off night just to get away from the house because I was just so constantly triggered I couldn't like I couldn't get anywhere I was um I was hiding under my desk a lot just so I didn't have to look at (laughs) look at things and I was like I I just I couldn't live like that anymore it was it was going in a very bad way so I had to leave um gotcha yeah (laughs) thank you thank you for talking about that like I I don't want to like focus too much on that or like get it get you into a bad headspace. I'm so glad that you're in a new place now. And we've only gotten to see like a little bit of your your living situation. Have you taken ownership of of your space or decorated yeah. or, or done anything that makes you feel like this is my this is my my place. This is safe. I did, yeah. I, I immediately painted it the walls when I got here. And I didn't have any furniture or anything, so I uh, went shopping around all the, there's loads of charity shops around here, which are like thrift, do you call them thrift stores? People call them thrift stores. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like big buildings and there's there's a few that are just around the corner from me that just do furniture. So So I bought loads of secondhand furniture and and that was fun. But then my agoraphobia sort of developed into um, only feeling safe in this one room. So I don't actually spend a lot of time in the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. Um, But I painted in here. See, I have a a blue wall and stuck pictures all over the walls. So it's nice in here, at least. (laughs) Yeah. How do you take care of yourself when there are days where you can only be in that one room? Well, that's why I have a giant water bottle because I, when I'm having a very bad day, I don't do a lot of moving and that becomes mm-hmm. problematic if you don't have like snacks and stuff in here because I would just not eat if I don't put those things in place first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's important. And then I just sort of, I've, I've been trying to give myself a break because I really like playing video games, but I have a lot of guilt because of trauma about doing anything that's not productive. Mm. So I've been trying to give myself a break and play more video games. <laughs> what do you play? Been, at the moment, I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2, like oh, nice. exclusively. I'm a bit obsessed with it, really, at the moment. <laughs> I've never played it. I've only seen a little bit of it, but I saw that there was somebody who was taking landscape screenshots and sending them into the local news station. Um, And, uh, and the news station kept like publishing them thinking that it was someone sending in actual photographs of like their region. And so I really like just like a plus trolling um just beautiful beautiful um but it is a really gorgeous game uh so it it's, is. it's easy to to pull one over on news stations should you hear this and be inspired go get them um <laughs> but 
Yeah, no, I I play a lot of video games. I didn't used to for a while, but I've been really loving it and enjoying the socialization aspect because I struggle a lot with socialization, making friends, spending time with friends. And it's really nice yeah. for me to be able to hang out with people in beautiful, beautiful virtual worlds and not have to leave a, a space that feels safe. Um, yeah, I used to play a lot of Fortnite for that reason. I just got into Fortnite. I'd never played it before. And within the last, I think, oh. month, started playing it for the first time. And I'm loving it. I haven't played it in a couple of years, but I was very good at it. And then I didn't play for a few months. And then everyone got way better than me. And I was just like, I, oh, just, no. I can't be bothered with this <laughs> level of research that you have to do to be good at a game. <laughs> I am a big believer in sucking at a game and having fun anyways and it's something yes. that I had I'm really surprised that I ended up getting into gaming because when I was younger I didn't have that mentality at all I felt like I had to be good at everything that I did um mm -hmm. and, I, and I felt really self-conscious and embarrassed if I wasn't like perfect or amazing at something that I was doing just a, a lot of just like, oh, feelings of deep shame that would happen whenever I had to actually learn something new. That was always really challenging. The process yes. of actually learning something new or being witnessed during that process. I, I have those same uh, feelings <laughs> very and, strongly. Yeah, and and they're, they're a struggle and they do intersect with gaming stuff. Um, so I never expected that I would end up getting into gaming, but I have. And it's been a really wonderful way for me to start to let go of those feelings of shame or, um, or just, just being, yeah, I never, I never expected that I would ever be able to enjoy just being bad at something or not amazing at something and just having fun anyway. And I really, I really like that, that there are these beautiful, beautiful virtual worlds that you can just hang out and like, and, and yeah, just, just be like, I suck. It's pretty here. I don't care. I'm having fun. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I'm jealous. <laughs> maybe one day. It's a good way to practice. And then may, yeah. maybe one day I, at, after practicing in a virtual world, I can go out into the real world and not be a Shanefield uh, gremlin creature. That sounds... That's goals. the dream. Goals. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But you, you make really beautiful, like challenging your agoraphobia and exiting the house and like expeditions does making content around that like do you feel any pressure to leave your house like is this I'm I'm interested um, in in the relationship between like challenging yourself for personal reasons or like any pressure you feel to leave the house like for content versus like for yourself for just personal reasons or just kind of I'd love to just kind of hear what your experience is. I don't feel pressure to make content outside, luckily, because I think that would be kind of awful. But I do put pressure on myself to go outside generally. Mm -hmm. um, and so I use actually use making content more as a motivator because I'd be like, well, I could go outside and make a video today. Like, it gives me a reason to go outside, which helps get me outside, you know. But I don't think I feel pressured to do that, thankfully. I'm so <laughs> glad to hear that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that would suck. I, I put enough pressure on myself as it is, really. <laughs> Sometimes I have pressure to make content, but not to go outside and make content. That's good. Yeah. It's it's nice actually, because it gives me a feeling that I'm accomplishing things by going outside rather than just like oh, I went outside. <laughs> I don't usually refer to it as agoraphobia. I don't know. I don't know if I feel comfortable labeling it that for myself. But I did experience, oh my gosh, it might have been like ten years ago now. I can't I can't remember how long ago it was, but there was a specific shooting mass shooting in america that really got to me 
And directly after that, I started having a really hard time leaving the house. And Mm -hmm. there were like just a number of years where I almost didn't leave the house at all. And I don't think people really noticed because I had always been very much an introvert. Um, But definitely it has been a struggle and just kind of like a ongoing, like just very quiet journey of getting back into the habit or just kind of recognizing like, ah, this is something that is happening. And then the pandemic was also a really interesting way that that kind of intersected with everything. And so kind of like back into a place of uh, of not really leaving the house much with the the added pandemic like edge to things and for me it's i have like a radius around my house because i walk my dog every day but if i get into a car that's when i experience a lot more challenge because it's it's not yeah. just leaving the house or leaving that radius mm-hmm. or that bubble of, or of feeling of safety but also now I am in a car and I will journey to a public place where there are people that I don't know yes. making yes. noises that I don't appreciate. And that that is where I experience a lot, a lot of um, anxiety and just uh, just like resistance and don't want to do the thing. So ongoing struggle, but I really appreciate your videos and the mm. going outside ones are, are very inspiring. And I, I think they're probably helping a lot of people that are also struggling with the going outside thing because it's uh, it's it's a, yeah. a common thing that can happen for especially you know folks who have experienced certain troubles so yes I I, I get people telling uh, more and more lately people messaging me and saying that that my videos are helping them and that that's amazing I never actually thought that sort of thing would happen so that's like it's very it, it inspires me to carry on I suppose yeah it's, it's like positive feedback loop yeah um, and we'll we'll end up all helping each other I like that yes in terms of healing from the past what have you found the most challenging well uh, it's hard to say <laughs> It's like all these phases I go through. At the moment, I'm having a lot of trouble with flashbacks. In in isolation, these problems become so all-encompassing that it's hard to sort of gauge which one is worse. <laughs> They're all mm-hmm. pretty bad, you know? Um, so, yeah, at the moment, I'm having a lot of flashbacks, which is, is horrible and um, really feeds into that agoraphobia because... Uh, I am way more triggered by things outside of the house than I am in my little bubble where I'm safe and I can control everything. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 hard at the moment. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't actually know where I am with my healing because it's so zigzaggy up and down. Um, but I don't know. I don't feel very healed yet. <laughs> I love that you mentioned the zigzaggy because um, that is that is very much what the path looks like is a zigzaggy yeah. one rather than like the the one of my favorite reminders is that healing isn't linear yeah. and it's it's very true. So I don't think of um, I it's it's very rare that I talk to a survivor that talks about things in terms of like unhealed versus like healed like done I did it I am healed it happens and it's always very surprising when it does but I'm like okay um (laughs) uh you know and maybe someday I'll be like healed um but (laughs) I I don't know um but for now very much like am am a believer in like yeah that zigzaggy Mm -hmm. just kind of thing and and that that is part of the process is the ups and downs and, and that it is that that is process and that it you know even even if something uh feels like a step back that it's not it's just you know a dip in the road and that that is a part of that that progress yeah and that that's okay and try to try to tell myself that I try and embrace the bad days as bad days and Mm -hmm. just try and take each day as they come really I, I I did get this realization not so long ago that I'm sick 
and and it's okay to be sick you know like before I just try and deny 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 everything so like, no I'm fine I'm just you know lazy <laughs> but no I'm sick and that's okay yeah well and that's a huge step too just acknowledging like what you're actually coping with yeah so I've certainly been in the cover it up and tuck it away and let's not deal with this kind of place and sometimes that's that's what needs to happen too sometimes that's all you can do um, yeah. for a while and then you know you get to a safer kind of Absolutely. space where you can start kind of unpacking things and just kind of like oh look at this what is this fresh hell like oh, okay and <laughs> yes. you know, like, just please and kill me <laughs> Yeah. 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 That's where I'm at right now. Just yeah. unpacking all the crap. And I want to ask, where have you found strength and support? Uh, and that can be yeah. that can be internally or externally. It can mean whatever you want with me asking that question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just keep going. It's just what I do. Just keep going. Just keep swimming. Yeah. Dory. Look at yeah. from Dory. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> and so my last question is, do you have anything that you want to say to the survivors who are listening? Just keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just keep swimming. I like it. They're, they're, definitely times where that's like that's all there is and I well, believe you <laughs> it's yeah. a good one <laughs> it's a super important one yeah I appreciate you thank you for taking up the space that you take up thank you for talking about the things that you're talking about thank you for your platform and just like you being yourself and showing up and mm -hmm. um and thank you for taking the time to he come here and talk to me, uh, especially about some like kind of super intense stuff. So I very much appreciate that. And I appreciate you. And um, yeah. And, th and thank you. Just thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Stop saying nice things to me. I can't cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I do. I show up on the internet and I say nice things to people. Ah. And then I, and then I just like sneak away and, um, and live like a gremlin and yeah. That's it's good. a good way to live. I think <laughs> I support it. Yay. All right. I think that's all. So do we want to end with a anyways, bye? Oh yeah. Anyway, bye. Anyway, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on loving, keep on fighting, and hold on, and hold on. Hold on for your